Steve Eisman, a.k.a. The Big Short, believes that the economy is more dynamic than ever before, with AI and infrastructure being the dominant stories in the markets. Steve highlights Apple as a key player in the AI space and anticipates a significant upgrade cycle as people buy new devices to accommodate the latest technology. He also mentions Microsoft and Google as core holdings, along with other companies that will benefit from the broadening out of AI technology. Stories in the markets today, and that's AI and infrastructure, and that's what's driving the economy. And, you know, all the economists who have said that because the Fed's raised rates 500 basis points was going to cause a recession have been wrong, mm -hmm. and we're just powering through. And I think the only conclusion you re can reach is that the U.S. economy is more dynamic than it's ever been in its history. So what's not to be Ha lucky about or happy about. I mean, about. that explains the momentum. We keep setting new records every Correct. day, it seems like. Yes, I mean, you know, what, what I would say is, you know, like I had a theory a few months ago that the hidden AI play was Apple. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be become consensus like in the last week. Yeah. So it's no did, longer... How did you know that before? Because there were so many questions about Apple and what it was doing. I mean, it's suddenly become a lot clearer that they're going to well, be Well, look, I'm no tech center. genius, but the, the, the only thing that I know is that if AI is going to broaden out beyond just um, the cloud, people are going to use it on their phone. And, and so that means Apple. And it means that my phone that I bought a year ago is probably not going to be adequate. Absolute. It's absolute. going to be obsolete. Yeah. So you're going to have the biggest refresh. So look, the next stage in the whole tech story is going right. to be you're going to, people are going to buy new phones, they're going to buy new laptops, and that's going to have a tremendous trickle down in, in, into the rest of the tech that. sector. You know, yeah. So right now I have the 15 Me Pro. Me too. I have the 15 Pro. Right. You're good to go, my friend. You actually don't need to upgrade this phone. If you have phones prior to this phone, you have to upgrade. Yes. And so the question is, what kind of upgrade cycle you think we're really on? Is this a multi-year uh, upgrade cycle? Is it a finite one? Meaning, is it two or three years? I have no is, idea. It's, because, no, it's because, impossible to know the, at this point. The economics are going to come as a result of the upgrade cycle. It is less clear to me that they're going to come necessarily from services revenue. That's, look, it's... <laughs> We could say whatever we want at this point because it's impossible to know. I mean, I think it's going to be both. I think people are going to upgrade. I'll, I'll certainly get a new iPad. My iPad's a little low. Right. Um, I'll get a new laptop because the last time I bought a laptop was probably four years ago. Maybe I'll keep my phone. Maybe I won't. And then there's all the services. I mean, it's impossible to say at this point what service is going to do because there aren't any apps yet that you're going to say you're going to pay for the services. So it's all pie in the sky at this point. If you think Apple is the secret play, but you think it's... Well, not so great. secret anymore. Yeah, not so secret. If, if you, are you looking downstream? You say that... Well, we're starting to do research downstream about everybody else is going to benefit. And, hey, I'm not going to tell you what companies those are because I haven't bought them yet. Yeah. But um, that, that's what we're working on right now. Do you hold on to your Apple position? Do you think that this... Definitely hold on to your Apple now? position. It's too, it's too central a figure in the whole story that's going to come. Where do you... Or how do you think about a Microsoft? Oh, we've same, only, for years, same story, same story. Central, central figure. But it's, it's, Microsoft is not going to be, I mean, it'll be like Apple in terms of you have to figure out who else is going to benefit from all the stuff that Microsoft is doing. But that has to be a core holding. And what about Google? Same. Same. I, I mean, there, there are two groups. There are the groups, there's, there's Microsoft, there's Apple, but then there are the people like Oracle, Google, Meta that have tremendous um, databases that that are going to be used, and then there's going to be all the companies that will benefit from the broadening out. The, the, the big question that I have, and, and I don't know the answer to this, is <clears throat> there's a thesis out there which I find interesting. I don't know if I completely agree with it yet, that for years software outperformed hardware. Mm -hmm. And I think there's an argument to be made that if AI is, is as successful as people think it's going to be, the cost of creating software is going to implode. Right. And so that would imply that the moats that some of these software companies have, not all, but some have around their businesses, are, are not going to be quite as high. And so you can make an argument that the revaluation of hardware is going to continue and that soft, some parts of software will derate.
I think it's a kind of an interesting an thesis. Interesting thesis. Um, if it's true, it's a very long-term thesis, so there's plenty of time to figure it out, but it's one of the more interesting things that I've heard in a long time. Steve, we have President Trump, former President Trump, meeting with the Business Roundtable in Washington, D.C. today. You have come up with this idea that his reelection is a certainty. Inevitable, inevitable at yes. this point. Why is that, and what does that mean for the So protests? my thesis is that um, the protesters on the college campuses are rapidly becoming, unfortunately, the face of the Democratic Party, although that's not 100 percent true yet. But that what's going to happen is in August at the Democratic Convention, which is in Chicago, ironically, given what happened in 68. 68, right. Um, they will convene there, and they won't be able to help themselves, and they will burn Israeli flags, and they will burn American flags, and they'll shout things like death to Israel and death to America or some variation of that. And the whole country's going to watch, and the whole country's going to be appalled. And at that point, the election will be over. It's not going to matter what, any, anything else, what anybody else says. That will be done. So what does that in turn mean for the markets, if that's your thesis? Concern? I don't think it means a thing. Um, I, I actually don't really think it matters that much for the overall market who's president. Um, it'll mar matter for certain subsectors. You, you know, probably some old energy stocks will do better. There'll be other things that might do better. But for the overall economy, I don't think it matters much at all.